good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I don't care what time it is. I just hope you all are wonderful and that you are blessed and that you are living life right now to the fullest, full of joy. All right, it's Yatsar here again, and we're going to be continuing the Calvinism discussion. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I thought, why not go ahead and do this? It's going to be beneficial, and I believe we need to talk about this anyway. We're going to go ahead and discuss Arminianism. Arminianism. I know that sounds like a tongue twister. Arminianism is essentially the opposite of Calvinism, and so I want to go ahead and address that as well. And then after that, we'll talk about predestination and free will. Which is it? Is it predestination or is it free will? And what the scripture has to say. So we're going to go ahead and dive into Arminianism. I don't want to take too much of time because I have a few things I got to record today. So I'll try not to make this video super long, but we have a lot of information to cover. So get some snacks. If you like to take notes or whatever, go ahead and grab a notepad, get you a pen or pencil, and we'll dive right on in. Again, I hope you all are doing well. God bless. You know, Jesus loves you. You know, I love you. And it's going to be okay. This too shall pass whatever you're going through. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive on in Arminianism and see what the Bible has to say about that. And I'll be diving, yeah, just diving right on in. All right, let's go ahead and go. All right, guys, so diving right on into Arminianism. Is it biblical? Why or why not? Okay, some of you may have already heard of Arminianism because I know you all are so smart, so well educated. And if you're not, that is totally okay too. Don't feel ashamed. So, Arminianism, what is it? So, obviously, in Calvinism, the acronym used was, um, it was TULIP, if I'm not mistaken, right? That was the acronym used. It was TULIP. So, for Arminianism, it's not, the acronym doesn't work as well, but I'm going to go ahead and call, and give this an acronym, an acronym anyway. We're going to call this PERKIRK. Pekirk, because P-C-U-R-C, Pekirk. <laughs> so Arminianism's acronym is Pekirk. You have partial depravity, conditional election, unlimited atonement, resistible grace, and conditional salvation. And we'll be diving on in what those mean. So Arminius, is that right? Arminius, whatever. <laughs> they believe in partial Depravity. Remember, for the most part, Arminianism is basically the opposite of Calvinism. So, partial depravity states that humanity is depraved but still able to seek God. We are sinners but not to the point to where we cannot choose to come to God and accept salvation. And those are the supporting verses that they use to claim that. Then there's conditional election. Conditional election states that God only chooses those whom he wills that he knows are going to believe in him, essentially. No one is, pre is predetermined for either heaven or hell. That's the key component for conditional election. No one is predetermined. That is what they believe. Then there is unlimited atonement unlimited atonement says that jesus christ died for everyone even those who choose to not believe in him jesus's death was for all of humanity and anyone who can be saved by belief in him and then there is resistible grace resistible grace says that god's call to be saved can indeed be resisted or rejected. It can be resisted or rejected. We can resist God's pull towards salvation if we choose to, right? So the Calvinists believe in irresistible grace, which says that God's call to salvation is irresistible. His grace is so irresistible, we have to take it, right? So, 
That's resistible grace. And the last part of Pekirk, <laughs> Pekirk says that this is conditional salvation. Christians can lose their salvation if they actively reject the Holy Spirit's influence in their lives. The maintenance of salvation is required for a Christian to retain it. The maintenance of salvation is required for a Christian to retain it. Otherwise, a works-based faith. That's what that says. So let's go ahead and talk about that before I share what the scripture has to say about Arminianism. So is, is this biblical? Is Arminianism biblical? Well, just like with Calvinism, I don't want to put myself on a label as a one point, two point, three point, whatever. I simply believe in what the Bible says to be true. I don't want to put labels on myself. I am a man of God, a Christian who believes in what the Bible teaches. But as far as Arminianism and Calvinists, it's they, for the most part, are on two opposite sides of a doctrinal issue. So I want to share with you what the Bible says about Arminianism. I remember, Arminianism essentially is that we have free will. No one is predetermined what in what what in any way. No one is predetermined either for heaven or hell. That is impossible. So what does the Bible say about that? Let's dive on in. So starting off with partial depravity. Partial depravity, this is what I believe, or not what I believe, what the scriptures say about partial depravity, right? So Luke 24, 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So it's clear that, yes, mankind is depraved, but we are still capable of choosing God. Conditional election states that no one is predetermined. That is incorrect. The Bible clearly states that, yes, people are predetermined to both heaven and hell. Let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 through 5 real quick. According as he hath chosen, chosen, that's key, chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So he chose everything even before the world was formed. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So this is talking about those who are predestined for God's kingdom. There's also another passage I'd like to share with you for those who are predestined to the lake of fire. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 4 talks about the wicked. Listen here. The Lord hath made all things for himself. Yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. So this clearly says, yes, even the wicked, there are wicked people in this world who are predetermined to the eternal lake of fire. Then there's unlimited atonement, right? Essentially saying that um, hold on, I just want to make sure I'm saying this right. Yes, that Jesus died for everyone. Jesus died for everyone. That's what a limited atonement is all about. So, Romans chapter 3, verses 23 through 25 say this. Now it was written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. Imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our, our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised against for justification. It doesn't say raised up only for some or delivered for some people's offenses. No, our meaning the entire world. Because we all sinned, he died for the whole world. Not just for some. He died for everyone. He died for everybody. Then, resistible grace. I want to talk about that real quick. Yes, I 
100% agree with resistible grace. I believe that God's grace indeed can indeed be rejected. I want to read Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 24. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. So, there, are, according to resistible grace, there are people who believe, speci uh, specifically, who take truth with Arminianism, who believe that once you're in, or you profess to be a Christian, you're in. That's it. God's grace is just so, is so, or no, specifically Calvinists believe in the irresistible grace. That's right. Calvinists believe that once you step in, you're in, right? His grace is so irresistible. I think of it like this. Judas, Jesus chose Judas as a disciple. He chose Judas as a disciple knowing that he would betray him. So Judas was a disciple, but yet he betrayed him. So we can't just say anyone who chooses to be a Christian, a professed Christian, at some point, it, it, the, the, God's grace is just so irresistible. No, it indeed can be resisted. It may be irresistible for a moment and resisted later, but there are people who just resist to it throughout their whole entire lives. And then lastly, there's conditional salvation, right? God, that um, conditional salvation is this. Salvation has conditions on it. Salvation has conditions on it. And I cannot agree with this. The Bible does not teach that. That is not who Jesus is. Nor was it who he was. Christianity is not a works-based faith. It is not a works-based faith. If you have no works, then your faith is dead. But we do works because obedience is simply an outward expression of our love for God. Obedience is an outward expression of our love for God. We are not obedient because we are trying to get into heaven. That's not why we are obedient. John chapter 10 verses 27 through 28 say, My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. There we go. I give them eternal life. Right? And they shall never, ever, 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 forever, ever, ever, ever perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Once you've received the Holy Spirit, he's not going nowhere. You may, you're going, because you are a human, my friend, you're going to have doubt, bitterness, saltiness, whatever you want to call it, even anger, frustration towards God. You might even have seasons in life where you walk away from your faith, but you'll always come running back because the Holy Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. So ultimately, there are a couple points, yes, in Arminianism where it makes sense. But no, as a whole, I do not agree with Arminianism. Well, there y'all go for the, the most part. We've just covered Arminianism. And again, Arminianism, for the 90% of it as a whole, Arminianism is about free will, while Calvinism is about predestination. Arminianism is free will, Calvinism is predestination. And we'll talk about that pretty soon in an upcoming video. Is it predestination? Is it free will? Which is it? Again, there are a couple points I agree with in Arminianism. There are a couple points that I agree with in Calvinism. But I do not want to put a label on myself and say I am either or. I simply believe I believe in what this teaches. This is truth. This is truth. I believe in what it teaches. I believe what it says to be true. Ultimately, that is what we should all strive to do. Believe in what the Bible uh, teaches. So we'll cover in the next discernment video. We'll, we'll cover in the next discernment video, 
Is it predestination or is it free will? Go ahead and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Be respectful, please. If you're disrespectful, I won't read the comment or I won't respond, right? So be respectful. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what other videos you might want to see, what else you might want me to cover. Because at first, I was kind of running out of ideas and I woke up a few mornings ago and it clicked and you can almost talk about anything when it comes to ministry, right? Anything that's going on within the world, any theological topic, you can talk about those things. So we have a lot of topics coming that you all will enjoy. I know you will. All right. God bless. I'll see you guys in the next video. Jesus loves you.